This is the new Alco Legacy Equipped RS11, available in the following road names, Alaska, Penn Central, Pennsylvania, Norfolk and Western, Nickel Plate Road, New Haven, Seaboard, and Lehigh Valley. Each road name comes or is uh, shipped with uh, two different powered road numbers, uh, each with Legacy, and there is an optional non-powered uh, road number available separately as well. So three road numbers per road name. Out of the package you receive the RS11, the engine memory module loading instructions, the manual for the locomotive, four replacement traction tires, a funnel for adding smoke fluid to the locomotive, and the engine memory module which is road name and road number specific to each locomotive. These, these, these RS11s feature LED directional lighting, fan driven smoke unit, die cast uh, trucks, side frames and fuel tanks as well as pilots, front and rear coil couplers, they are equipped with legacy rail sounds and legacy uh, command, so you are capable of getting 200 speed steps out of these engines when used in conjunction with the legacy set. The RS lo RS11 locomotives feature a, a removable hatch on the roof to gain access to the control switches and the volume pot. That hatch is held on simply with magnets. It is not directional, you can place it back on the roof in either direction. Underneath that roof hatch on the top of the locomotive, you can locate the three switches and the manual volume control. The very first switch is the program run switch. In the program position is where you assign the locomotive ID number. In the run position is where you operate the locomotive. For conventional operation, the program position is used as the direction lockout switch. Second switch down is the Odyssey 2 on-off switch. Uh, on the right, in the ODY position, that means the Odyssey 2 speed control is enabled and the locomotive will maintain a set speed regardless of track conditions or load. In the no ODY position, that would be Odyssey off, at which point the locomotive uh, will not have speed control. You can still control the speed up and down, but it will change based on track conditions and load. Uh, if you're operating in Legacy or TMCC or even conventional, you want to make sure that the switch is in the ODY position for optimum performance. The last switch is the smoke on off. In the SMK position, the smoke unit is enabled. In the no SMK position, the smoke unit is disabled and cannot be overridden by any control on the cab 1 or cab 2 remote. Finally we have the manual volume control. That is the master volume control that will increase or decrease the overall sounds including horn, bell, and prime mover sounds of the locomotive. Setting the volume with this master control cannot be overridden by the cab 1 or cab 2 remote. Before we get our locomotive on the track we want to make sure that we uh, use a little preventive maintenance. To do this we're going to use our oil applicator, our needle applicator with uh, light oil. We're simply going to apply a small drop of oil on the axle where it goes through the bushing in the truck. Just a small drop is all that's needed. We want to make sure we do this for both sides of the truck and both trucks. Also a small drop of oil right on the axle for the collector. Work that in with your finger. That'll prevent any unnecessary squealing from uh, presenting itself when we run the locomotive. Then to uh, on the axles to work that in, this is a non-locking gearbox. You can spin this over by hand. Work that oil that we put on the axles into the bearings and you should have flawless operation for years to come. So before we get our Alaska Alco RS11 on the track, we want to make sure that we load the engine memory module into the remote. Using our numbering convention of the last two digits of the cab number, since the engine is 3602, we're going to assign it as engine 2. So on our cab 2, we're going to press engine 2. We're going to take the engine memory module and insert it into the top of the cab remote with the silver circle L facing up. 
we're going to press the info button one time and we're going to select the load button it asks us it says module inserted Alaska 38464 RS 11 number 3602 load engine data we're going to press the button under yes and now the engine data is loaded we have to remove the module to continue let's so remove the module store it in a safe place what this does done for us is it's assigned our name which I'll show you in a moment it's set our type to diesel our control type to legacy and our sounds to legacy rail sounds to exit this menu we press info and the road number appears momentarily as does Alaska RS 11 on the top of the remote the module has done several things for us one as we showed you earlier has set up all of the variables in the control menu for the locomotive specifically engine 2 the other thing that it's done is it's added these icons on the touchpad for us the icon for volume up tower com or crew talk rather engine rpm up volume down the black circle is shut down if I turn the throttle down here that icon changes to a black triangle which is emergency stop a sequence that can be played while the locomotive is moving go ahead and stop the engine by turning the thumb wheel down we have manual RPMs down tower calm smoke off smoke on again because we're in legacy mode we have three levels of smoke if you'll watch here on the top I press low again is medium again is high and then the off button three times will take me to smoke off I have engine reset down here this would be the zero on a cab one remote rule 17 lighting on and rule 17 lighting off when I press the aux one key the tower com and the crew talk, crew talk buttons uh, become shaded this will actually play a different dialogue than it does when it's not shaded by pressing the speed bar I open up my six preset railroad speeds tower com smoke off smoke on this uh, bar graph over here on the left this is the amount of labor that the locomotive produces I can change that by pressing effects up or effects down I'm going to go ahead and press the up button watch the top of the screen and this bar graph will also increase as it says labor increase across the top more times I press this the more that bar graph grows press effects down that bar graph decreases and across the top of the screen it says labor decrease this will directly affect the RPM and the laboring sound of the locomotive when you're running it finally in the number one position that is roll speed that's the very first and slowest speed step that the locomotive will attain to exit out of this screen I simply press the aux one or straight arrow key again and I get back to my touchpad now that we've programmed our remote or loaded our engine memory module in our remote and uh, we've selected engine 2 as the road number using our numbering convention of the last two digits of the cab number we need to program the locomotive so to do this we simply remove the hatch on the top of the locomotive and we place the program run switch in the program position applying track power you'll notice when track power is applied the only thing that comes on is the number boards both in the front and also in the rear the class lamps or marker lamps and the headlights and the cab light do not come on at power up so using our cab 2 remote we'll press engine 2 and the set button the horn blows to confirm that it took the command we can go ahead and put the switch back in the run position the locomotive from this point forward will continue to respond to the address of engine 2 let's go ahead and turn the power off for a minute we need to add smoke fluid to this locomotive interestingly enough this actually has a funnel in it because the hole for the smoke unit is offset it's actually back here and using a funnel it directs the vapors forward and then out through the stack 
as a result of that, if we use the funnel that comes with the locomotive, we run the risk of leaving smoke fluid uh, in the funnel itself. And as we covered in our smoke, uh, smoke Unit Basics 101 video, anytime that there's fluid laying in the funnel, the vapors will actually collect around that fluid instead of exiting the stack. So using the funnel that comes with the locomotive, we run the risk of uh, reduced smoke output from the smoke unit. So what we want to use instead is uh, one of the needle applicator bottles, which we've covered in earlier videos. Uh, with this long needle on it, which will allow us to get the uh, allow us to get the smoke fluid closer to the hole, and just a quick squirt is all that's required. Maybe about 10-15 drops is what we're putting in there, and you want to blow down the stack to make sure that uh, we clear the the funnel of any fluid or maybe even any fluid that's collecting around the the inlet to the smoke chamber in the smoke unit. So assuming that you've done that, let's go ahead and put the hatch back on the locomotive and run it through its paces. So go ahead and apply power. Once again, once power comes up, engine comes up in command control, only the number boards are illuminated, headlights, marker lights, and cab lights remain off until you address the locomotive. So go ahead and run it through its power-up sequence by pressing and holding the on off button in the lower left hand corner of the touch pad of the cab 2. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start up and stand by. Copy that dispatcher, starting up the engine. Out. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn the smoke unit on high. It's not uncommon for it to take a few seconds for the smoke to appear. Go ahead and play the uh, crew talk for you. Dispatcher, double up, air test complete. Am I clear? Over. Affirmative, the track is yours. Over. And the tower call? Roger that. All clear. Out. Dispatcher here, you are clear. Pull. Over. Copy, we have that clear. Out. You'll notice that the volume of smoke coming out of the stack when the train sits at idle is very low. This is normal performance. As I turn the throttle to get the locomotive moving, you'll notice that the smoke volume will actually increase. Cab light goes off at the first speed step. The locomotive begins moving. This is the horn, all three levels. sounds. Applying the brakes now. Again, the smoke volume increases when the locomotive is moving, decreases when it's sitting at idle. The engine is equipped with uh, front coil couplers activated by the F button on either the cab 1 or cab 2 remote. And rear coupler as well. When you change direction, the red marker lights on the front of the locomotive come on, the headlights on the back of the locomotive come on, and the headlights on the front of the engine go out. These legacy equipped RS-11s uh, come with sequence control. Uh, the way sequence control works is you press and hold the AUX1 or straight arrow button for three seconds or more. You'll get a couple toots and blasts of the horn. So two bells and a horn blast tells you you're in sequence control. What sequence control is, is uh, it's a set of pre-recorded pre uh, sounds that work off of the response to the throttle. So whatever you do to the throttle, the green light. Clear down, down. Over. such as the tower pump, I'm going to go ahead and turn the throttle. The engine is actually moving at this point. We are underway. Over. Roger that. Have a good run. Out. The bell will 
stay on until you reach speed step 23. Once you press speed step 23, the bell turns off automatically. You of course have complete manual control over horn, bell, tower com, crew talk, etc. while you're in the sequence mode. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and spin through the throttle a bit so you can hear some of the pre-recorded sequences. Just past speed step 23, the bell turned off. So each time you make a change to the throttle, the locomotive in turn plays uh, whatever recording it's, uh, it's uh, pre-recorded to do. The longer you run the locomotive, the more tower calm, crew talk dialogue you'll get out of it. Uh, it's, this sequence control is a great way to, to uh, just have trains run, sounds play while you're act, working on other areas of the layout or playing with other locomotives. To exit the sequence mode, Simply press the AUX1 straight arrow button and the R or 0 if you have a cab 1 to get out of sequence control. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the engine down to a stop. Once I get to speed step 23, the bell will turn on. And we'll just go ahead and hit the brakes. I As you can see, the uh, cab light came on. Cab light is only illuminated when the locomotive is at a stop. If you're operating in the conventional mode, the cab light will stay on all the time. But under either TMCC or legacy control, cab light turns off and the locomotive begins moving. So let's go ahead and exit sequence mode by pressing the AUX1 or straight arrow key and either 0 or R on the cab 2. Get a horn blast to tell us we're out of that mode. Um, you can actually fill up the fuel tank by pressing AUX1 and holding down number 3, I believe it is. I'm going to go ahead and hold down either the RPM up button or the uh, number 3 position on your cab 1. Cut that out. Dispatcher, we've got a full tank. Over. Cut that out. I'm going to go in. Out. Slow the engine down. It stopped. We do this again. To exit the sequence mode, we simply press the AUX1 key or straight arrow button and either 0 on the cab 1 or R on the cab 2 touchpad. Get a short horn blast to tell you that you're out of sequence mode. We go ahead and fill up the fuel tank, play the fuel tank filling sequence while we're sitting at idle by pressing the AUX1 key and pressing and holding the R button on the cab 2 or 0 on the cab 1. We'll do that now. Once you let off the 0 or the R button, you'll get this sequence. And finally, to go ahead and do the shutdown sequence, press AUX1 and the round black circle in the middle of the touchpad, or number 5 on a cab 1. See you next trip. Sign off. Out. Once you go through the shutdown sequence, you can see it shuts the smoke unit off. Both the cab light, uh, the headlight, the marker lights all turn off. The only thing illuminated are the number boards. And to get the sounds to come back on, you can either press number 3 on the cab 1 or RPM up on the cab 2. These locomotives will be shipping to your dealer in the very near future. We hope you enjoy them.